All right, so you're just going to look over here at me okay. or the guy over there with the camera. Okay. And it's not a live stream, so if you want to stop and rephrase, you're oh, really? really welcome to. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're really welcome to. Okay. Yeah. All right, so first, let's just ask you the first question, jump right in here. What made you run for Boise Mayor? Well, for us to continue to be one of the most livable cities in, in America, we need to reduce spending, and we need to cut taxes. We need to give homeowners the opportunity to stay in their homes. Um, for example, uh, we can build a $100 million library, or we can cut taxes. And so really it's a campaign about ideas and about priorities. Uh, do we spend $11 million on an out-of-state architect? Or do we hire the 54 police officers that were short? Um, do we spend a million dollars on, on looking at whether or not we can build a circulator downtown? Or do we focus on our current mass transit system? We have areas of Boise that currently don't have transportation. One of our, maybe the highest property taxpayer in Boise, Micron, doesn't have bus service. Um, so in some of our largest subdivisions don't have bus service. So those, those, it's really a campaign of ideas, and that's what got me into this, this campaign, looking at different ideas, looking at different opportunities, and how do we continue to be one of the most livable cities in America. And so uh, you've touched on this just a little bit, but uh, I'll have you expand some of the problems that you see facing the city and your solutions to those. Well, certainly right now, because of the time and history of our city, affordable housing, being able to stay in your home. We have people losing their homes because of high property taxes. So we take, currently the city takes 3% per year every year. It just keeps going up and up and up. For example, in 2010, the city of Boise collected $100 million in taxes. In 2018, they collected $150 million in taxes, property taxes. So that just, that just kind of shows you how much a burden the residential property owner has in maintaining the city of Boise. And so uh, to help people stay in their homes, those struggling homeowners, we need to reduce, not take that 3%. So that's a major, major challenge. And then, of course, traffic congestion. It's a big issue. And so we don't have the infrastructure in place. So without the infrastructure in place, without a good mass transit system, we're just going to see traffic congestion get worse and worse and worse. And so a change in priorities. Instead of $100 million downtown in a library, you refocus. You refocus those priorities. We've got a skeletal bus system. We can add buses. We can ask routes. We can, in fact, we can make it free for people to ride the bus. That will attract more riders, help reduce traffic congestion. And uh, so obviously running for mayor talked a lot about growth already, but just your thoughts overall on this recent growth that Boise is seeing. Well, it's, it's overwhelming, and it's, it's, it's overwhelming our infrastructure. Um, for example, as you grow like that, as your population grows, as we've expanded our uh, boundaries of our city, we don't have enough police officers to cover all this expanded area. And likewise, we don't have the fire stations. We just had over 200 units in townhouses and apartments approved out in northwest Boise, there's no fire station there. Uh, we don't have the streets and roads, that kind of infrastructure in place. So it's time to pause, it's time to take a look, and it's time to catch up our infrastructure before we continue this massive growth. And so your vision for the city over the next 20 years? Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful city, and we continue to have parks in our neighborhoods. We continue to be a friendly city. We continue to be a place where people want to come. But over and above that, we need to have the jobs. And so our support of having the infrastructure in place so jobs can grow, so companies can grow, so we can have those uh, the, the kind of companies that, that really provide the kind of wages we need to afford our city. So unless we change our taxing and spending habits, we're not going to be an affordable city, but we can be. We can make some changes, change our priorities, and this can continue to be really a wonderful place to live. Okay. And finally, uh, what new ideas would you bring to the table as mayor? Well, interestingly, I was mayor for 10 years back in the 90s, and in 1997 we brought a Regio Sprinter, a commuter train, that ran between Nampa and Micron. And you know that was a long time ago, over 20 years ago. It's time to focus back on things like that. Back then they said, wow, that's too futuristic. We won't need that for 20 years. Well, now it's time. We need to do 
things like that. We need to have a transportation system that, that people can get on and anywhere in the neighborhood and get to their place of work. I had a recent conversation with somebody and they said, look, it would take me two hours to get to work and two hours to go home if I took the current bus system. That's four hours of their time. They're not gonna, they're not gonna ride that bus. Well, it, the opportunity to have, make sure we have clean air, that we are a clean city, that we are a safe city. And I see that into the future and, I, and the, kind, the, the opportunity to have uh, police officers in every one of our elementary schools. We don't have that today. So I think in the future, that's the kind of city we should have and those are some new ideas that I would bring to the table. Okay. Any additional thoughts that you'd like to mention? Um, CJ, your Casey. <laughs> Any additional thoughts? <laughs> you're doing pretty good. Yeah, I, I, no, I think I'm good. Thank okay. you so much. All right.